Hello. Welcome back, everybody. It is Miami Total Football Radio, the show back in front of your eyeballs or, well, I guess in front of your ears if you're listening to this after it's being recorded live here on Thursday night in sunny South Florida. As you can see or as you will hear, I am Franco Panizo, one of your usual co-hosts of this show, which is also known as Miami Total Football Radio, the show. And we have Andrea Yanis looking spectacular today. Look at her, looking very nice today, Andrea. Andrea came to celebrate, not to mourn, I guess. She's looking, <laughs> she's looking, no, she's no, looking no. really nice. She's looking really nice today. Andrea, how are you today? Good. Glad to be here. Uh, and we have a lot to talk about. I guess today, Inter Miami fans are going to give me, me van a decir que tenía razón, yeah. as... <laughs> I came here to gloat. No, mentira. Uh, no, joke. I'm joking. I'm here ready to talk about what happened with Inter Miami yesterday. We have a lot of stuff to happen. I want to hear your opinion. And I'm sure you want to hear my opinion. We're going to talk about it. And we're going to give everyone the best information like we do on this podcast every week. It depends who it is. Because some people think you are the star of the show and love to hear your opinion. And some people come in with some very <laughs> harsh criticism from Andrea or for Andrea. Uh, after yes. the fact, it's uh, either you love Andrea. I got a Andrea. nickname. I got a nickname. I cannot say it because we cannot say bad words. But someone has not stopped writing on my Twitter everything that I post, calling me. Oh, I don't. I'm not gonna say, but you know what he called me. So he sends me DMs. He, I guess he's a he, but it's so funny to me because well, this is. Hilarious. That, that is true. I will say this. I will, we, we do need to share that. We do need to share that, Andrea, because I've also been sent tweets about your tweets from like 2012 and 13 and 14 yeah. from this Someone person. went deep diving on my tweets. I can't believe. And I can't that's believe all they found, that. right? Nothing wrong because... <laughs> It was a lot of it was a lot of pro Ronaldo tweets, and they were and they were giving yes. me stuff for that. I can't remember the person's Twitter handle. I can't remember, but that that, that has happened. I know exactly yeah. what you're talking about because they've come. They <laughs> haven't come at me, but they've been like, "Hey, what's up with your co-host?" And says that, that that messy mania, that messy mania that, yeah. that, that brings crazy. so many positive things. You know, that also brings yeah, some that's crazy. Some like yeah. I, the worst, but this uh, people got uh, messy fans got mad when I uploaded the video from Monterrey. Oh, Mikey V, thank you, Mikey. Thank you for everyone who sends their comments. And Mike V in the comment section says, Andrea is my favorite exclamation point. So uh, the hate that I got, but not for that video exactly, but for the uh, Canadian guy, McNaughton with Nashville, yeah. when I went and asked him, like I got death threats for like a week after people were sliding in my dms in instagram and in twitter and i don't share my my instagram i don't share it. it's not like public so uh it was like crazy but it's part of messy mania i can imagine the hate the players get like that's why i sometimes i think and and i get in there in their position because it, it must be exhausting exhausting and and if you're not someone that's in a good mental health it, it, it may take a toll on you because people are insane in social media but yeah that that guy calls me ronaldo's <laughs> be, be, beach like miami beach but you know what <laughs> ronaldo's so, beach ronaldo, maybe yeah. you just you know island jose andrea on the beach you know maybe I'm ronaldo's maybe that's where it goes yeah maybe, maybe it's something <laughs> Something along those lines. Yeah, yeah, but listen, I've never hide. Listen, in my decoration of Jose, I'm in Jose's studio today. So you mm -hmm. see, I put it, uh, I, I've never hidden that I'm a Real Madrid fan, that I'm a Portugal fan. My dog's name, name is Figo. So it is what it is. But I, 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 I am always, I try to be, call it as I see it. So I'm not going to destroy Messi. Of course, he's one of the greatest in the world and in history. But I'm always gonna gonna give my opinion without any bias, but yeah, I won't lie. I am a Real Madrid fan. I've never denied that. Andrea coming clean on the podcast. Yes, coming clean. I'm an yeah. Arsenal fan, but the number one team in my life is the best team in the world, FC Motagua from Honduras. So embarrassing. <laughs> <laughs> We're doing so well without hearing a Motawa reference on the show, and now you gave us one. Goodness gracious. Tank721 in the comments says, ignore the naysayers or embrace the hate. 
and feed the dark side of the force. There you go, Andrea. That's I'm uh, in full extent. Well, you'll have plenty of moments in this week's show or in the second show this week to express your opinions because we've got plenty to talk about, mostly referring to Inter Miami's most recent match and the subsequent elimination. Yes, Inter Miami is done in the CONCACAF Champions Cup. They lost 3-1 to one down in Mexico to Monterrey, falling 5-2 to two on aggregate. That does it for them. That's it for their run. They reached the quarterfinals. No closer. Only one team remains. That's the Columbus Crew. The rest of the teams are from Liga and from Mexico. Listen, so, and we need to talk about that, Frank. We will talk about that. We will talk about yeah. that. But we're going we're gonna to ease our way into it. We're going to start mostly with, well, first off, with the game itself, right? So Inter Miami loses this game 3-1 to one after falling in the first leg 2-1 to one at home at Chase Stadium in Fort Lauderdale, Florida a week prior. It was always going to be a monumentous task. You know the size of the mountain that sits outside of Monterrey Stadium? It's picturesque. That was the size of Inter Miami's challenge. And clearly it was too far of a climb. No pudieron. They just couldn't do it. They couldn't get it done. They lose convincingly yesterday, three to one. They didn't even get on the score sheet till late on, and that was from Diego Gomez, a header after a free kick from Lionel Messi. Monterrey was already cruising to the finish line. It was done. It was all but over at that point. We can talk about you know the different goals. The first goal, Drake Calendar, with a horrendous, a horrific, nightmarish back pass that goes right to Brandon Vasquez. And Brandon Vasquez just finishes with ease. Just one-on-one with the goalkeeper at that point. It was, you know, one of the lowlights for Drake Calendar. We'll be making any highlight reels uh, for him in his career. Yeah. But as this game is not on Drake Calendar. This game is not on, for me, Tata Martino. This game's not on any one player. Inter Miami just wasn't good for me. Inter Miami was not good enough mm-hmm. in this game and over the course of the two series. Now, we do. I will say this, and it is not too... Ruffle your feathers, Andreita, but Inter Miami in the first leg was playing a very smart game. They were up 1-0. Yeah. to They were on their way to a victory until David Ruiz got that needless red card. Now, again, it's not... Yeah, like David a- Ruiz changes but- the game, but I don't think they right. would have closed that game winning 1-0. Yeah. Even if they won that game 1-0, I don't think they go to Mexico and, and get the result they needed. I still think yeah. they just wouldn't have been good enough. So that's what I'm saying. I'm not blaming it on Drake Calder. I'm not blaming it on Tata. I'm not blaming it even mm-hmm. on David Ruiz. David Ruiz definitely has responsibility for that first leg, but even still, I just don't think Inter Miami would have gotten the job done protecting a 1-0 lead down in Mexico. I just I don't think so, but that's just my opinion. You could think differently. They could have gotten an away goal, and then that helps them, etc., etc. Whatever your, your thoughts are, I just don't think Inter Miami was good enough nor deep enough, and I've said this for weeks now. We've, we've argued about this on this podcast in the preseason and what's you know more realistic for Inter Miami this year. I always said MLS Cup should be – the the real goal, the real goal, because I just don't see them having enough to win the Champions Cup. Everyone talks about Messi, Los Cuatro Fantásticos, the Fantastic Four, as we dub them, with Busquets, Suarez, and Alba. But it's just not enough. That's not enough in a tournament like this where you're playing against teams, of course in Mexico, that have the unlimited spending power to fill out a roster with talent all over the starting lineup. Listen, plus- I think that you're going on Tata's way out what he said yesterday in his press conference which was very disappointing for me because he went so for por la fácil for the easier route because instead of having retrospective he blamed the roster rules columbus crew has the same roster rules and they went and competed of course they won because of penalties but they were intelligent they were went and competed and after going down with tigres that uh, with that error of the goalkeeper as Drake as bad as <laughs> I think it was worse than than the Drake calendar error and even though with that and with all, the whole stadium that is as the same as 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 the one on of Rayados as big and with all the stadiums in their in, in their backs they went and got the tying goal they went and got the goal from uh, a play that Cucho Hernandez starts and Farsi and then Diego Rossi ends the play a good play and Tigres fought 
and Columbus fought and they resisted not only 90 minutes, they resisted the 120 minutes because they resisted extra time with Pierre Guignac, with even with the changes bringing players that are in Mexico's national team, Sebastián Córdoba, Osiel Herrera, which are young and are future stars in for Mexico. Even with all of that, Columbus crew had a solid game plan by their coach, which the players executed to perfection without spending all their money on aging stars like Inter Miami did. So for me, Tata Martino, yes, you can talk about the roster rules, but he doesn't have an excuse because this team brought Luis Suarez, Messi, Busquets, and Jordi Alba and thought that that was enough to win this no, tournament. No, 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 and no, no. I've hold been on, saying it since the beginning. No, no, no. Andrea, that, I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to argue That wasn't that. enough. I'm that arguing with you there. I'm argu I, I agree that that wasn't enough, but I'm going to debate with you there i don't think that they thought that that was enough like i don't I mean, they brought in other pieces to try to make this team as competitive as possible and i'm not giving tata martino an out here he he has some criticism to face as do the as the team as do players for the way that this two-legged series went but it's a fact that mexican teams can spend more money than MLS team. There's yeah, a reason but why. And Andrea, there's a reason nothing. why only one MLS team has won this competition. There's a reason why only one MLS team, yes. despite all the strides and all but the But that doesn't mean all... that you can't compete. They invested wrongly. And I got called out in this show because I said that Suarez was a mistake. And it was because if they wanted to win CONCACAF League, the Suarez, bringing Suarez compromised everything. They couldn't bring any more players because they brought Suarez. And that is a fact. Columbus didn't do that. Columbus won MLS and brought players that could elevate their roster. And it did. They competed in the round before and they went and eliminated Tigres in Mexico, do you know how complicated that is? They hold it off the best player oh. in the last 10 years of the whole CONCACAF, Andre Pierre Guignac, and they hold them off and they played well. Inter Miami looked horrible yesterday and on the second half of the first game. So for me, saying that the roster, it's an ex a way out for that. It's not a valid that. excuse because yesterday that. his tactics and his aging stars were the biggest difference. That's the roster build that Inter Miami has, though. That's that's the approach that they went. And with. they did it. They built it like that. Andrea, but who, Andrea? Let's be honest. Because they yeah. wanted be to honest. bring Luis Suarez. Let's be honest. Okay, look, you, can, you don't bring Luis Suarez. Players. What? You don't bring Luis Suarez. You bring another player in another position. Inter Miami still not you winning. You bring this more tournament. players. With They're still Luis not Suarez winning this money. tournament. They're still not winning this competition. They're not. They were not deep enough, and they were not talented enough. Look, look at the mistakes that were made over the two legs. Just look at the mistakes, right? David Ruiz's red card, unnecessary. Unnecessary, but it's, it's a self-inflicted wound. Drake Callender yesterday and his Diego poor Gomez back pass. Mistake. Diego Gomez, right. The, the, the camp against Diego Gomez's uh, mistake on the uh, second goal that gave Monterrey the lead in the first leg in South Florida. Another self-inflicted mistake. Yes, in mind, he was playing with 10 men at that point, but a self-inflicted mistake. He could have controlled the ball and cleared it. He could have done anything else, but it gets away from him. And they score. One to three scores. Drake Callender's bad back pass. Or bad pass. It's not a back pass. His bad forward pass that Brendan Vasquez. I mean, these are self-inflicted wounds. The team is just not good enough to compete at this level. They just are not good enough. Martino aside, any coach. I mean, I won't say any coach. But most coaches in the world are not going to get much and more out of this team in this competition. In this competition. It's just not... It's not gonna happen. You, you don't make any changes. Like Tata for me, for Martino for me has no excuse. The game he planned yesterday was a mistake. El Tan Ortiz se lo comió entero as a coach and with his technical planning for this game. Tata Martino left a lot to desire and made Messi. It's so hard to make Messi look bad. And he did, and he didn't even have the decency of losing 3-0 in the 70th minute to take Messi and all these stars off. He didn't even take Jordi Alba out after the first La Que Se Salvo de la Primera Roja. He didn't even take him out after that. That, Gus for says, me, is unacceptable. Gus says, Andrea, you are wrong! Exclamation point, exclamation point. Miami has a good balance roster with tactics and injuries were the main factor. So I don't agree with that. Let's what are the injuries? Okay. Okay. Let's, let's, let's get, let's get, Farias are, we're going to change this. 
No. Let's get let's get to the bigger picture. Let's get to the bigger picture. Because again, I don't if you look at if you break down the two legs, these are self-inflicted wounds. That just means that you make errors and mistakes because you're not good enough. You are not good enough. And that's Inter Miami's problem with this roster this year. It's just not good enough to compete at an international level. Yes, are there injuries? Absolutely. Does that impact the depth? Because in MLS there's roster rules. Yes, that impacts your depth. 100%. And Inter Miami was weakened by injuries, players that were missing, etc., etc. But that being said, all that aside, the team just isn't good enough. And I think what happened here was, well, Inter Miami spoke a big game, a lot of marketing, a lot of coverage, porque es un equipo que, que vende. It's a team that sells in terms of attention and media spotlight because of Messi and everything that comes with it. So I don't think people took real a real value or real stock of what this team was capable of in this competition this is an international competition and you're playing teams in mexico that have unlimited spending power and it i expected them across to the board since the first since the first you thought, yeah you thought they were going to lose to nashville yeah, you didn't even nashville, to pass nashville. yeah i expected that but i didn't I expect, expect them to beat them teams. Play- i don't expect them to beat the top next yeah, I just that that's, was, the that's what that's we've said in this program and my my predictions were that I said 3-1 on the first leg and in this one I wasn't here in the in the podcast on on Tuesday but I expected Monterrey to win by a large margin but for me what's unacceptable is the way that Inter Miami played Inter Miami looked horrible Messi looked horrible Busquets looked horrendous Jordi Alba looked washed and Luis Suarez was horrible what luis suarez did uh with 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 arguing with the referee and with all the players was horrible what's horrible inter miami looked horrible horrible yes, they looked horrible, horrible. they did no uh, other Raymond, way and, raymond's a cut in the comment section inter miami was just full of hype but no substance and that's exactly what it is this team was overrated from the outside it, yes it, like, i don't think people generally speaking not saying everybody not saying everyone in the media not saying every fan not even saying all of us here. I don't think enough people took a realistic viewpoint on what this team was capable of in this competition. Because like, I think because people think that they see this name on the back of an Inter Miami jersey that, oh, all of, all of a sudden they can just win games because he's around. In MLS, mm-hmm. yes, yes, because there's parity. The rosters are built, even though you can you know uh, build it a little bit differently than the other team, it's more or less because of the mechanisms the same. So it's meant to be as equal and as level of playing field as possible. Whereas when you're playing internationally, that's not the case. This team did not have enough. I told you from jump, I think this team needs to go for MLS Cup. I think it's the most realistic trophy and the biggest trophy that they can win. I like There was talk about going to the Club World Cup and the team sold that message. Like, oh, we want to go to the Club World Cup. This is so, this is our most important competition. And I, listen, that's if that's what Inter-Miami wants to do and, and sell publicly, then of course we will criticize them against that because that's the barometer that they're, that's the bar that they're setting for themselves. But the real, the real, the real, well, the realistic or the real truth is this team just isn't good enough. Just look at the back line, for example, right? You have a right back who maybe in MLS he'll cut it, but he wasn't starting for Boca Juniors. He's not, a, he's not, he wasn't a first choice player. And yet. I told you, he wasn't an upgrade for oh. Yellen. It's more of the same. Toma, I disagree. Thomas Aviles, young player with a lot of promise who has had some good games, some bad games, but he didn't, he hasn't played a whole lot in his career. He's still a very young player. Nicolas Freire who played in Mexico, then went to Greece because he wasn't cutting in in Mexico, so he went somewhere else, got injured. And then you had Noah Allen, who's a young MLS player who's still building his career. Jordi Alba, that's your back five. That's your back five. Jordi Alba, obviously ex- experienced on the older side, but like Inter Miami just doesn't have enough. Pound for pound, and I tweeted this earlier today, pound for pound, Inter Miami was never going to have enough in this tournament. Let's say they got through. Let's say somehow they hold on to that 1-0 lead in the first leg. They get through with an away goal here in the second leg. Do you really think that they're going to go to the semifinals and win the semifinals and go to the final? No, this team just doesn't have enough. Just doesn't have No, it enough. doesn't. It does. And I've, I've always said that since the beginning of the season because I, I said Suarez is not enough to make this team win internationally as they wanted to make this team play in the Club World Cup or at least win it on the field because now the controversy is is U.S. soccer is going to give that place that they have to give away because they are the host to Inter Miami, right? But Inter Miami 
for me is avoiding that responsibility, what I was saying at the beginning, because Tata se va por la facil. He knows that his words are going to resonate, and he even goes further to say, oh, Liga MX is, is going to be better, and until that changes, it's, it's going to happen. But he said, de nada le sirve ganar este torneo a la América porque no tienen jugadores en la selección. So what is it, Tata? Are they superior or are they not? So for me, that was a cheap way out for him. Him saying that because let's he, listen, he just has said let's listen to the roster about that. Let's rules. Listen. If he if he just said the MLS roster rules, but then he goes and says, "Oh, if America wins this, it doesn't matter for the national team." Why did he say that? It's let's just listen, an excuse. Let's listen to that. An excuse. Let's listen to that. It's not. I don't think it's a choose. I think it's real, a realistic assessment of he's, what he's, the, he's, the situation. He's way out. Because of the ridicule they did. All right, yeah. let's let's listen to Tata Martino. Let's listen to Tata Martino on on the tournament showing, Inter Miami showing in this competition. Y acá hemos competido bien, diría muy bien con Nashville, muy bien el primer partido con Monterrey y, y creo que muy bien hoy hasta el gol de Berterán y ahí creo que se terminó la eliminatoria. Ese más o menos el balance que hay. To sum up, for those that don't speak or understand Spanish, he gave a quick summary of his analysis of Inter Miami's run in this competition. And he said that he thought they competed well. They competed well against Nashville, that they competed well in the first leg against Monterrey, and that he thought they competed well even in the second leg up until the second goal, which then doomed them to, well, an elimination. Now, where, did, agree- what, where was that competition on the match yesterday or on the second half in the first leg? I didn't see it. I didn't see it. And for me, Tata has, has no cr- auto criticism. For me, he has responsibility because I saw he said Columbus has the same roster rules, but they have a better coach. They have a better coach than Tata Martino in la actualidad. Right now, Will Fernandez is better than Tata Martino. Morelia, fact. Morelia Coromoto Zurita in the comments section says, Dad has to go. Messi never had a title while he was a coach. Well, this recent one, but he's a bad technician. Coach. For me, oh. that's part of the problem because I didn't see competition from Inter Miami from yesterday. Since I saw the lineup published by their social media channels, I told Jose, llevan una goleada. Because for me, when ha- for me, it's that's fir- Tata's first unforgivable mistake. When have that back five back line worked this year, this calendar year? When has it worked? Maybe half a game. But se fue goleado en Arabia. He lost. In MLS, he's lost in, or he has lost points with that, with that formation. And he goes to the most important game of the year and goes to that formation. I agree with you. That I agree with you that the back five. I agree with you that the back five is not this team's strongest formation. I agree with that. I fully, 100%, I'm on board with that. And I think Tata Martino would be on board with that. I think he would have preferred to go into this game playing a 4-3-3. But to play a 4-3-3, you need another winger. Who's going to play on the wing? There's no Robert Taylor. There's no Facundo Farias. Who else do you have? Who else? Julian Gressel? You're going to put Julian Gressel back up there? Again, when you know he's not, he's not giving you much of anything up there, if anywhere at all on the field. But I can't. I think his hands were tied. I think if it were, if it was up to him, if he would have had, you know, the full disposal, the full arsenal of players, juega con línea de cuatro. That's what I think. I think he would have gone with a with a back four had Robert Taylor been healthy, had Facundo Farias been healthy. But they weren't healthy. So what does that what does that leave him with? He went to the back five because I, unless you can give me another winger option, like you think Leo Afonso could start in a game of this magnitude? I mean, I would I would strongly disagree with that, but maybe that's what you think. Maybe that's what other people then think. Then why did you start Noah? Could, 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 yeah, could Franco Negri have started? Could Franco Negri could have started. Franco Negri could have played. Yeah, maybe. Maybe you could put him on A the lot line. of options. He could have played differently. Listen, since I saw the lineup, I knew Tan Ortiz has won the duel against Tata Martino because Tan Ortiz changed his uh, way and played with two strikers. So... I knew Inter Miami was going to lose this match since I saw that because Inter it's simply not the formation for Messi and Suarez and it's not the formation for this team if you're going to play with these four Barcelona stars. It's not the formation that you need for these players. So for me, that was the first mistake. 
after the calendar goal, I think the team like settled, but they didn't have a shot on goal until that messy shot that went above the, the goalkeeper that went uh, above Almada. That was the only shot of Inter Miami in the first half. And that is because Messi had to go down and look for the ball. Because instead of adding another man in the midfield, you added a man for the, for the defense that made no difference. No difference. Possum in the comment section. Franco, come on. He didn't start a center back just because he didn't have a winger. Exactly. I disagree and, with that. I and, with and that. Because if you don't have me, a winger, if you don't have a winger, you can't. That extra man. No, that sent extra man made it that the Messi had to come down and look for balls. That's why Inter Miami, the first shot on goal that ha they had was that Messi shot after. And after that, the goal on off offside, which was clearly offside. So what, what does that tell you? That the tactics are wrong. And then after they go on the second half, I thought, okay, maybe he makes some changes. He realizes that this back five is not necessary. Uh, Monterrey are still not coming in fully. He doesn't change anything. And of course, Monterrey got the tactical, uh, um, the charla ta technica, and they went for it and they scored in the first minutes of the second half. And even there, Tata Martino, no changes. And then he comes out to the press conference saying that he didn't make a change because the other players were too young and too Before we get there, we'll get there. We're and get he there. didn't want to expose the them. But the you clips. exposed Lionel Messi and the you clips, exposed Andrea. Luis Suarez to clips. look horrible. Hold on. Hold, hold your horses. I have those clips. We're going to get there in a few minutes. Before we do, we we'll talked about the For game. For me, we'll he deserves a lot of criticism. For me. He, it's on him. No way, man. No way. This, there's, there's no way that this team is good enough to beat Monterrey. There's no, just no way. No way. Not even if, not even if Facundo Farias was not available. Just Robert, to beat not Franco, not but to compete. To compete. Like, they looked like New England Revolution, who lost 10 to 1. They looked the same. They looked like amateurs on the field. And you made Messi, you made Messi look like an amateur on the field. He looked bad on that second half, and you didn't take him off. I there's nothing you can tell me to 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 accept that from Tata Martino to tell you the truth. That's bad, 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 bad. Let's listen to Tata Martino on the overall competition. This is what you were referencing earlier here on this show when he started talking about how Liga MX teams just have more ability to spend, therefore they're more talented, therefore that's why they win more often than not. Let's listen to this. We can go into it a little bit more after. Well. Eh, va a ver, eh, la, eh, la, la derrota de hoy lo, nos quita una ilusión que teníamos, que era eh, poder seguir este, adelante con, este, en esta competencia y poder replicar lo mismo que hizo Columbus ayer justamente acá en Monterrey. Eh, sí sigo sosteniendo que en, en esta instancia por lo menos de Conca Champions normalmente no, no sucede siempre así accedieron los equipos que mejor plantel tienen en el, en el fútbol mexicano eh, y hablo de América, de Monterrey y de, y de Tigres no lo pongo a Pachuca no porque no me parezca un muy buen equipo sino porque la estructura de Pachuca está armada a partir de la incorporación de jugadores jóvenes eh, las estrellas normalmente la tienen los otros tres equipos y son equipos realmente muy fuertes lo mencioné hace pocos días en, en, en tanto y en cuanto la MLS no libera un poco más eh, tantas reglas que hay para tener eh, planteles un poco más frondosos y donde las ausencias, las lesiones, las suspensiones eh, sean tan difíciles de reemplazar evidentemente todavía va a haber este, una ventaja so it's a long way of saying that Mexican teams are more talented than MLS teams because they have but more spending power. Example, he gave a contradiction, and I told you that that in a comment when you when you were with Jose Pachuca doesn't spend money bringing Pachuca's he, biggest star was Salomon Rondon, and, and he differentiates them, and he final. differentiates so he differentiates Pachuca. He says yes, he takes but them they out are of the there, field. and they have a young roster as with young players as Inter Miami does. And they went and beat a lot of teams to get to the semifinals. They didn't even have rest on the first, on the octavos de final, like Inter Miami did. Andrea, 
There can be exceptions. Listen, Luis there Lopez, be... there, there's some truth to what Sata says, but it's also a convenient excuse to deflect from his weakness as a manager. Both can be true. Exactly. That's what I'm saying. For me, he used that as la facile, la facile. Because, listen, Col I bring Columbus again because Columbus won this 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 series against Tigres. Thier they, they advanced on penalties. They didn't win. Andrea. They advanced on penalties. But Columbus didn't have Cucho the first game. They began losing with a goal from Guignac the first game, and they came back Ajisita. without their best Ajisita. player. Ajisita. Hold on, hold on, hold on. You, you, I, I told you this was going to be a show for you to, to spread all your opinions. Lay them out there. I'm definitely tired because that night's nice game was late and I had to wake up early for some errands plus my usual Thursday haircut. Look um, at Franco's so I, I get a, I get a weekly haircut on Thursday, just for anyone's curious. I get a haircut Single every Thursday. Stuff. Single people stuff. <laughs> I get a haircut every Thursday unless, unless Inter Miami has practice and I have to rearrange my weekly schedule. But normally I get a haircut every Thursday. So that, yes, como es posible, es posible. Um, Anyway, anyway, I'm tired. So I'm not going to go back and forth with you about the same thing. I will just say one last time. There's a reason why only one MLS team has won this competition. There's a reason why. And look, Columbus did an incredible job to get through. And they did it against a very talented opponent. And they deserve all the credit, all the props, all the kudos. Todo el, toda la recomendación. Yeah, mm -hmm. all the flowers. Um because they did something that's very, very difficult to do. But there can be exceptions to the rule in any tournament or in any competition. There can be exceptions to the norm. And that's what the Columbus crew is. If you look at the last four, los últimos cuatro, los semifinalistas, the semifinalists, there's three Mexican teams and one MLS team. And that MLS team, while they did a great job, they did it through on penalty kick. There's a reason why this happens and why it happens every year. What Tata is saying is not a lie. It is a fact. It is a fact that Mexican teams can spend more money, and because of that, they have an advantage. And do they normally capitalize on that advantage? Yes. Now, that, it's a that fact, always but the case? you use it as an excuse. This team, I'm, I'm, gonna, gonna, I'm not going back. We're not, we've already talked. I've said, it, I've said it before. This team wasn't good enough. If you You're not going to hear Wilfred Nancy when he loses with Monterrey, with the same Monterrey team, or he wins. You're gonna not going to hear him say that because that's an excuse when you lose. See, Carlos C. He said, he, C in the comment section says, even if what Tata's saying is correct, he's the wrong messenger. You can't have Messi, Busquets, Alban Suarez on your roster and complain about rosters. Exactly. Disagree. Disagree because soccer is not soccer is not built off of football. When they keep it football, it's not built off of Columbus. Columbus won without their biggest star. The, it, it, they, they didn't win. They tied the game after they were losing without Cucho Hernandez, and not because he was injured, because but because he's indisciplinado and he was suspended uh, 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 that game. So Columbus crew can do it. Can show a fight can show you how you play in your house because even though they received tigres on the first leg they didn't play like inter miami did but inter miami played intelligently that first half on that game but inter miami didn't play good in that second half and they didn't they didn't play good yesterday at not even even a moment in this match. So for me, Tata Martino saying this is an excuse because you have the perfect example of a of a team with a roster and a payroll way less than what you are paying that had enough players, that trusted players, that had Narlington Nagbe playing. He stole. Hey, he played. Narlington that? Nagbe playing, and he played. He sold and he played an amazing match. That like, Spanish, if you have inter that Spanish pronunciation of Darling Tignagby <laughs> just, just got me, bro. Oh my God. Yeah. <laughs> people, Skrila says people forget they're not in the prime. Yeah, they're not in their prime, but I never thought that that the Martino would make them look bad. Darling Tognagbe looked better than, <laughs> than, than Busquets. <laughs> oh, that's a good one. That's a good one. Thank you. Uh, thanks for that. Listen, 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 listen. Skrilla, yes, people forget they're not so in the prime. Me, I, people, are, a, people, yeah. people see the names and don't like take into context where they are in their careers, and the rest of it's reminded. Just because there's the Cuatro Fantásticos, this team is supposed to just will its way to make Franco, Guignac is 38. Guignac is 38, and he still scored two goals. They were eliminated, but he is, 
you can see his dominance on the field. It's that's not an excuse. Of course, you saw, but for me yesterday, what you saw of Messi and Luis Suarez was Tata's fault because after that Berterame goal, he should have known that the game was done. There's no way they're coming back. He, he should have taken Messi out. At least Messi, you can leave Busquets and Jordi Alba, but Messi, man, how do you expose Messi to look like that? That for me is unacceptable. To tell you the truth, it's really unacceptable, and that, that has no excuse. That yes. the day before he told Jose, "Yes, I'm giving the chance." Well, that's where we're going. That's, that's where we're going. That's where we're going. That's where we're going. And before we do that, this was Inter Miami starting lineup. Just so everyone knows, it's a five-three-two. Drake Callender in goal, Marcelo Wegans, Thomas Aviles, Nicolas Freire, Noah Allen, Jordi Alba were your back five. Midfield three: Julian Gressel, Sergio Busquets, Diego Gomez. Up top: Lionel Messi with Luis Suarez. Now. This is where I think it's more fair to criticize Tata Martino. And I'm going to ask you some questions. But first, we're going to listen to two clips. One is from after the game. Right? So we're going to listen to this one first. Because Tata Martino did not make a single substitution in this game. Even when Inter Miami was done and dusted, when it was clear that they had no hope to get through to the next round, Tata Martino still did not make substitutions. And he probably should have because Jordi Alba ended up getting himself sent off. You could clearly tell he was frustrated. He got a yellow card and then a few minutes later gets another one. He's gone. If Inter Miami makes it to the Champions Cup next season and he's around, he would miss uh, that first game. But anyway, this is Tata Martino why he made no substitutions in this game. A rare, a rare sight this day and age when you have five substitutions. Very rare sight not to make any substitutions. No hacer ni un cambio. This is what he said about that. Porque todos los chicos que teníamos en la banca eran justamente chicos muy jóvenes. Eh, el desarrollo del partido no estaba para poder este, eh, o para utilizarlo alguno de ellos y ponerlo en unas circunstancias totalmente adversas. Y por eso este, pensé que lo mejor era terminar con, con los mismos jugadores que habían empezado. Ok, that was after the game. And he says. That, I mean, you paraphrase it, Andrea. This is this one's on you. You can paraphrase that one. He said that he didn't want to put young that in his bench he only had young players and he didn't want to put them in adverse circumstances. That is literally translated of what he said. That he that's the think, reason why essentially, he essentially that he didn't and left him. that eleven players that he started with because the uh, the youngsters in there. Uh, in the in his bench were as too young and he didn't want them to experience those adversities adverse uh conditions in, in essence he's saying that the players on the bench are are, are too young they, they they didn't have enough experience to play in a They're, game of this magnitude. The only now, this one was the bench. Less than this was the bench years. this was the bench hold on this was the bench CJ Dos Santos the backup goalkeeper Ryan Saylor Ben Hemming Kremaski, Franco Negri, Yannick Bright, Lawson Sunderland, Schneider Borgelin, Leo Afonso, and Cole Jensen, another backup goalkeeper. Not a whole lot there, my friend. Not a whole lot there for him to play with. Now, that being said, that being said, this was Tata Martino. You're down 3-0. You needed to substitute them. Now, that being said, this is what Tata Martino said before the game when Jose Armando, our other co-host, and then Jose, a.k.a. Cinco, shout out to him. I don't see him in the comment section like you were on the last show, but nonetheless, mm -hmm. we, will, we will give him his, his due credit. He asked about the youngsters before the game, and this is what Tata Martino said before the game in the Match Day Minus One press conference on Tuesday. A much different response. Bueno, a ver, yo creo que ellos están absolutamente preparados, si no, no, no contarían con minutos en el primer equipo. Eh, cada uno de ellos, Leo ahora últimamente... En otro momento, Yannick, eh, Pep Casas, y bueno, y los chicos jóvenes que ya tuvieron que asumir responsabilidades <coughs> en momentos difíciles del año pasado, como Benja Kremaski, como David Ruiz, como Noah Allen. Eh, también un poco el trabajo nuestro se trata de esto, ¿no? De cuando hay chicos con capacidad, eh, contar con ellos, promocionarlos y a veces de una forma un tanto apresurada, pero producto de la necesidad, se encuentran con estas posibilidades de jugar un, un partido de tanta, de tanta importancia, pero absolutamente están preparados para hacerlo. Respecto a lo otro... 
Absolutamente preparados. Absolutely prepared. Absolutely prepared, he said. And let me tell you, all the young players, players were absolutely prepared. Just for the prepared. people who don't speak Spanish. Yes, Out. absolutely now, prepared. Before, before you, He's before dead. you go to a foot slide tackle here on Tata Martin, <laughs> my, 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 my question to you is, and and you can dissect his comments however you want. What does it say to you, Andrea, or to you, the listener, or to you, the viewer, that he did not sub in any of these young players? What do you think that says about this team? For me, he it says he doesn't trust them. For for at he that can level, his he does mouth, not trust them. puede llenarse la boca, talking about how prepared they are and how good they are, but he didn't trust them there. And let me tell you, let me tell you something. <laughs> possum, <laughs> possum in the comment section, which by the way, possum is still undefeated in consecutive weeks with the best avatar in this comment section. Little possum, <laughs> he says that he thinks they're ass. Repeat and, and, that he thinks they're at. That's what Possum says about what his response is to what. Yeah, and players talking. must <laughs> must feel. Let me tell you, players might feel bad when he, they listen to him saying this, because one day he says they are prepared, and the other day, when are you gonna give these players a chance, another chance to get this atmosphere again? Because they they don't experience that in North America. Calendar hadn't experienced that. Uh, Benjamin Kremaski and Leo Afonso, Gianni Gray, all these players haven't experienced that in their life. They are too young and they came from MLS Academy, so they haven't experienced that in their lives. So when will Inter Miami get this opportunity again? In a, in, in a, at least a year, and if they qualify. It could be years till the, they qualify again. And that's a, a, a problem also with MLS. And uh, MLS, and it was a problem with the national team when MLS brought all the stars from the national team back to MLS to play. I'm referring to Josie Altidor, Michael Bradley, Clint Dempsey, et cetera, et cetera. They did. They did. Because it's a fact that when you play with that kind of pressure you need to do better every week so they don't have that these players are not gonna experience that you were losing 3-0 at the 70th minute this was the moment to bring Yannick Bright to bring Kremaski to bring Afonso that are youngsters that that could have gotten that playing in that stadium that the World Cup is going to be played, playing with that afición, with uh, a Monterrey fans screaming at them, yelling at them, and having that experience was important for them to have. Tata denied them that, and also in the moment he denied them them that and left Messi to look bad for the whole 90 minutes without substituting him. For me, that's just unacceptable by Tata. And Justin said, says, says, why is Franco defending Tata? What's Franco's agenda? Because for me, Franco, that's undefensible on both sides. On not giving your, your young players chances when you've talked about them. And when you're losing 3-0 in the 70th minute and, and keeping Messi in the game. And... That for me has no, Tata can tell me whatever he wants, but that was the moment to bring all these five youngsters that you had in, in the bench. You could have okay. Andrea, and Andrea, Afonso yeah, yeah. and okay. substitute those players. As, as Freddie Diaz says in the comment section, Freddie Diaz is my lawyer. No, I'm just kidding. But he says, no one has an agenda. <laughs> Everyone has a different perspective and opinion. That, and that is correct. Listen, I will criticize Tata here, and not because I'm being told in the comment section that I'm not, but yes, because if you, and look, I don't, I don't buy the whole coach speak. What said, what they say in one press conference, like words are words, actions are actions. That that to me means more what you do than what you say. That's just me. Now, should he have brought on some substitutions in this game when it was over? Yes, I think he should have. I think he should have brought on some substitutions. Game's over. Give him some experience. Give him a run out. I mean, maybe he didn't want this. 3-0 scoreline to end up 5-0 or 6-0. Maybe he didn't want it to become a complete bloodbath. Maybe that was his thinking. Because, I, again, it, it goes back to my original question. My original question is, what do you read into the fact that he made no substitutions in this game? And I agree with everyone in the comment section and you that, to me, it reads that he doesn't trust these players for this level. For this level. At the MLS level, I think he would trust them. 
But for this level, I don't think he did. And I think he didn't so want... So he kept was... Suarez looking as a fool, Jordi Alba looking I as think, a fool. I think 3-0 to zero looks better than 6-0. And he prefer, he would prefer that than the eyesore of a 6-0. to zero Because Inter Miami makes headlines regardless of who they're playing against because of Se all the igual. But I'm talking about in this game. They could have lost 6-0 maybe if... if they bring in the substitution. I think that's the only that's the only explanation I could think of for why Tata Martino didn't sub the game. Now, do I agree with that? No, I think you you at that point you're throwing in the towel. Yes, you're saying, all right, we're gonna get, give these young guys some minutes. We're gonna expose them to a higher level. Hopefully, some of them you know gain ba- invaluable experience from this, etc., cetera, etc. Cetera. Now, he did not do that. Okay, I'm oh, I'm okay with that criticism, and I criticize him for that because I think he should have put in some subs. And you avoid a Jordi Alba red card. You avoid you know, potential injuries to some of these aging players like Messi, Busquets, Suarez. If one of those players pulled something because their muscles just gave out, then it would look 10 times worse. So I agree with Messi you. going to play at Arrowhead Stadium on Saturday when they, so. Kansas City is going to go to another state, to another city to play this game just because Messi is playing. Is he, is he going to be able to play in MLS in 90 minutes? Or is Tata going to say, oh, we had a game on the during the week. It, it was a lot. But if he says that, it's going to be on him because he could have substituted him by the 70th minute knowing he came from injury. For me, Tata uh, doesn't have an excuse for me. Is is y- y- You see, Andrea y Franco, Martin Jacinto says, Andrea y Franco no hubiese sido mejor poner a los jóvenes frescos en lugar de la expulsión de Alba. He's asking us 100%. that it wouldn't be better to put the youngsters and Alba wouldn't got gotten Ejected, yes. And 100%. for me, that says a lot, Franco, that when Jordi Alba went and got the first yellow card that should have been a red because he insulted the referee and grabbed some someone by the neck, that doesn't help also to the allegations of, of Monterrey because he went and did that unprovoked. He grabbed him by the neck. When you see that as a coach and you don't take that player immediately off, for me, that's something wrong. And that question <laughs> that was asked was... in Spanish, yes, hubiera sido mejor que jugara con los jóvenes y no hubieran sido expulsados. Tal vez hubieran perdido 10 a 0, pero ya tenían perdido el partido, nunca iban a remontar. They, will, also... they would have never come back. There's also, you know, there were images of Suarez pulling a Monterrey player by yeah, his arm in the middle like of the game. I mean, Suarez, but, that's why I told you, Suarez looking like a fool. Jordi Alba looking like a fool. And Messi looking bad and lost and all those, those pictures that you see uh, that that were um, La Noticia, the, the, the news of the day in the whole world, because Messi was just standing there looking defeated. You needed to. You are the coach. You needed to avoid that. You needed. You needed to take care of your players. The game was already lost, and you didn't need it to expose Messi. And you needed to give your young players um, opportunities to be in the ambience. For me, the only good thing that Tata did in this game was after he didn't want to criticize Drake Allender as he didn't want to criticize David Ruiz in the first match. For me, that's the only positive thing that I will say from Tata, from this Monterrey match. Francisco Garcia, and before the game, Tata can't say he doesn't believe in his players, even though he doesn't, because they are too young. Afonso's, what, 18 or 19? He has no experience. Again, I agree. Afonso is 22. The only one after... uh, Let me tell you something. I want to say this before you start. The only one under 20 in that bench was Benjamin Kremaski, who is 19. Then the other ones have 22, 25, 23. So it's not like they're youngsters. Kubarsi was there playing a semi-final. Oh, Lawson, in Lawson, Sunderland, Lawson Sunderland, Cole Jensen are all experienced players. Listen, again, the, the point is, the point is that he should, I, I agree, I think he should have something played. And he did it, that says volumes to what he thinks of them at that level. I agree that he should have, because it could have been worse, right? To just, just to summarize. But he did not. For his reasons, and that's it. That's it. I mean, it, it's definitely a point of criticism. Definitely a point of criticism. For me, for sure. it, it, if Tata needs to start a- answering questions, and for me, it's super um, telling that he he will not speak tomorrow with media. I, I, uh, I think Javier this. Morales is going to speak. Again I do want to add this, and- Andre. I want to add this. I want to add this because I, I don't think it's. I think we've talked about it throughout the course of the season, and I think at the MLS level, it doesn't impact things that as much but maybe at a higher level it does maybe maybe not 
But I think, not only with the roster build, but I think with the chemistry and the yeah. locker room. I think that there's a very big divide. There's the Cuatro Fantásticos. There's the Cuatro Fantásticos here, right? And sometimes they even they even train in like with them just by themselves. And then you've got you know the other South American players and the you know more veteran MLS players, right? And then they're they're in that second one. And then at the bottom you've got all these young players that Inter Miami has to rely on right now because of injuries and whatnot. I mean, is the makeup of this team inside that locker room at its best? No. Is it? Is it? And I think no. I think that's also something to, to factor in here. And uh, that you're going to start. I told you that. I told you that at the beginning of the year. I, and now I, you're going to start. I've said know that. No, I've said You're that. going to start. And that's going to affect the locker room. And you're going to start to see group. Well, groups are already forming because it's the four of them and the, the rest. So you don't have once once Gregory left and once the ending left, that stopped. And Calendar is the captain when Messi is not there, or Calendar doesn't have that experience or that aura for everyone to 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 follow. So, so Tony X with a decent point in the comment section to not even seem like he was trying to send a message to MLS. Maybe, maybe that's what he was trying to do. Maybe. Um, all right, we're at, we're. I'm trying to keep this one less than an hour and ten. So let's very quickly just switch gears because we've talked about this game in good detail. Inter Miami. Look, at the end of the day, they are out of the CONCACAF Champions Cup. They are. Let me tell you something. They're let not me, good. They me, were not good enough. Close. They were not good. Enough. They were not good enough for that. And I, but again, I, I still think I will. I will. Redondear la idea. I will close out the idea by saying this: Tato Martino has made no secret for several weeks now. He's been not viciously critical, but he has been critical of the inability to spend more money, the inability for MLS teams to. He's have not spending the money correctly, man. That's the truth. And he's just putting excuses out. You have spent a lot of money bringing Redondo, bringing Diego Gomez, bringing Weigand, and getting rid of players that you didn't want. This roster is on him and on Chris Henderson. That's the truth. So he cannot continue to talk about, oh, we don't have the roster. We don't. He built this roster. He built this roster. Phil Neville never had a roster like this that he could choose every player because even when he chose three or four players, he had Pizarro, who someone else had brought. He had Calendars, who someone else has brought. He had um, uh, the Dutch guy, who someone else had brought. So not guy. even Dutch Phil, guy. not oh, Marsman, I forgot. Let's, let's so not even Phil. So let's that needs years. to stop, needs to stop with that. And we need to call him out because that's just, that's just, I don't know. That's just that. That's just not good enough. That's having no criticism. But let me finish with no, 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 no. That I want to say. No, no, no. One is that Gressel video. One is the Gressel video. Save that. Save that for later. Save that for later. And the other comment. I let me finish. The other comment is I wanted to close saying that Beckham is a true professional because we saw one thing with Messi and the Cuatro Fantásticos and their security and Justine being there and not letting anyone talk to them and not letting anyone not even close to where they were walking. Beckham went to a restaurant, took a picture with everyone, with every fan, took a picture with El Lava Platos, with the chef, with everyone so Beckham really understands what is it what it takes to build something and to to maintain it so that's what I wanted to say I don't know what that has to do with anything we were talking about but anyway all right anyway, <laughs> um, let's move on in remind me we'll return to league play and I think this is where the spotlight will be on Tata Martino the rest of the season if he's not up to snuff at MLS then yes then he's firmly in the spotlight and then I think he could be on the hot seat if he does not produce results in MLS, because that is mostly what MLS, sorry, mostly what Inter Miami will focus on the rest of the way this year. Yes, they have Leagues Cup, but they've already won that, and sure they'll try to win it again. But at this point, it's all about MLS and trying to win MLS Cup. So they start or they continue their campaign this weekend against Sporting Kansas City. In a very large stadium. They're not playing at Children's Mercy Park. They're not playing in the MLS size stadium. They're playing in the American football hand egg mm -hmm. size stadium. And 
It's going to be a very large crowd because Messi is expected to play, at least from what we know as of today on Thursday night when we're recording the pod. This is now where Tata Martino has to show that he's a good coach. They've well, got to start what? getting his way. They've got to like start in MLS, it doesn't matter. That's what, it's yeah, like, that's where it's like what? you tell me, Caleb Porter kept his job after America scored 10 on them. Like, what are you going to show? What are you going to show? That you're an MLS team, that you are if they win Saturday, they are not they are not a good team. Still, I'm not, I'm not, I'm not, re, I'm not regurgitating the point from because we've said it like for 50 minutes now. If you thought that Inter Miami was going to seriously contend for the Champions Cup, yeah, I but think you're saying you or anybody, is, they are a you good or team. anybody, we're not paying attention. You or whoever you're saying thought that, that not they are attention. a good team. If they win on Saturday, no, they're, they no, no, they no. are I'm not. not they're a good team. If that they doesn't win on mean they are a good team. They, this is where they have to perform. This is where Inter Miami in this competition, Inter Miami is a top team in the Congo Champions Cup. They might be a uh, media darling, but they are not a top team do they have top level players like Messi yes but are they a top team no they're just a media darling a team that people like to talk about like that people like to watch and discuss because of the star power that they have but they were not a top team in the Champions Cup in MLS they are considered a top team and this is where Tata Martino has to keep them at that top team level and if he does not then I think there's real real chances for him to lose his job I think there's real chances for the seat to get hotter because that is where this team is expected to be better than the rest. Not in Champions Cup. I don't care what anyone thinks about, you know, the, what the, they, anyone the team. said was, because they said Champions They can say whatever they want, Andrea. They can say, they can, they can spew a whole bunch of nonsense. That doesn't mean that we have to consume the nonsense and say, oh, okay, well, that's it. That's we'll take that at face value. No, they were not. No, good it's, what they're good I mean is that we cannot give them, we cannot say move on. They were eliminated from Champions Cup and move on. No, no because of course, that of was course not. that was their goal. Supposedly, they but spent the whole stock. year. But you have to take stock. This team's not good enough. This team's simply not good enough for that level. It's that simple. It's that simple. You can say the coach, you can say the players, whatever you want. You can say all of it. You can say the roster build. The team is just not good enough for that level. They will be in MLS action this weekend against Sporting Kansas City. We expect Messi to play. We said that uh, a couple minutes ago. Inter Miami needs to bounce back with a win because they have not won, and I believe, five games across all competitions at this point. Losing, even tying, wouldn't really help the overall mood right now, the overall vibe. There's clear frustration. So they need a win. They need a win. Andrea, what do you think? Back five, back four, and what do we think for the lineup? Well, um, I, I would like to give you my honest opinion, but really we can't because we, we are not – Privy, 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 privy to information with injuries. So I would like to know if Sergi Kristof is going to be back for that game because that would depend on my answer if they're going to play with a back five or a back four. Because if he's back, they're going to play a back four. If he's not back, I think we can see the, the back five still uh, with a variation. I don't think Jordi Alba is going to be playing. I don't think uh, some of the players that we saw uh against Monterrey are going to play. I don't think we'll see Luis Suarez start this game. Um, so you think we'll see I some th rotation? I think we'll see some rotation. I think uh, we could see Diego Gomez starting this game. I think we can see Busquets starting this game. And um, uh, well, let's, those let's, are the players. Let's go off the premise that it's going to be the same team that dressed in Mexico. All right, let's just go off that premise because mm – -hmm. Right? Like you said, we don't have any updates with regards to injuries ahead of this game. We'll get an update of sorts on Friday um, when there's some media availability. Again, back four or back five? From what, from, let's just go off of Wednesday's roster. Back four or back five? Sporting Kansas City, oh. before you say it, Sporting Kansas City is in seventh place in the Western Conference. Two wins, four draws, one loss. They've scored 10 goals, given up 12. Pretty mediocre. They played, they, they mediocre. played against Phil, and they were winning 3-0, and they got... Let him patar. So they, they, that's what you can patar. expect. Okay, so, <laughs> so do you expect Inter Miami to win this week? Mediocre. Yeah, I would expect Inter Miami to win. This is a I must agree. win game. This is not just to win, but this is a must win game because Kansas City is an opponent that's that doesn't have much this season. 
that doesn't have much. A lot of their core players left. I'm talking about Roger Espinosa, Raham Susi, etc., cetera, etc. Cetera. But and they 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 are building that roster. One thing with Peter Vermes is that you never can count, count him out because I spent half of last year criticizing him because their team were the worst in the league. And then Alan Pulido came back and and they made it to the playoffs. But I, I think this year they don't have that that chemistry still. They are, like you said, a middle tab team, table team. And Inter Miami should win this game, even if uh, they they employ the same starting eleven and even with a back five that they played in Monterrey, they should win this game because they would have Messi and Suarez okay. starting. They so. should win this game. Do they yes. win this game? Yes or no? I think uh, if the Fantastic Four start, they can, they they win. If no, you said you don't think Jordi Alba. You don't. You haven't said yeah, why. I don't, you don't think, think they are all starting. Yeah, I don't think they're not Jordi Alba and not Luis Suarez. I don't think that they are starting. Who's gonna start? I, Schneider, Borgelin, Campana's not healthy. So do you think Messi could play as a striker? I'm gonna go four three three. I'll say four three three for Inter Miami, and I think it's gonna be Trey Callender. Chelo Wegan, uh, Tomas Aviles, Nicolas Freire, Franco Negri, if Jordi Alba does not play. It's, there's rumors out there. There's rumors out there. I, don't, I, I can't say them because I didn't hear it, but from what our discussions have been, there's rumors out there that Jordi Alba may not be in uniform for this one. Franco Negri at the left-back spot. If you're going three in the midfield, it's going to be Busquets, Gomez, probably Gross. And David Ruiz. Yeah, I'll, I'll I'll take David Ruiz over over Julian Gressel in the midfield. I'll, I'll I'll stick with that. I know Tata's really stuck in on Julian Gressel, but I think the returns have been very poor, and I think he has to start realizing that. And I think David Ruiz could come in for Julian Gressel in, in the midfield, and then up top you'll have Suarez, Messi, Gressel. Even though I think Gressel deserves to be on the bench just because of the lack of options. Yeah, that's what I, I, that's what I, I, I was going to say, Gressel. And I think we can see even we can we could see um, um, we could see a, a lot of changes. I don't think Busquets is uh, is going to to be benched. I think from for me, if you ask me personally, uh, from the Cuatro Fantásticos, for me, Busquets has been the one with the most impact in this team because. I I really think Busquets seems to care a lot about what happens about the team, and he was the one who came out and spoke after the, this loss in Monterrey, and he's he has always in the opportunities that the, the, he has spoken to media and spoken to us, he has always been very 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 centered, very classy, and very transparent. For me, Busquets is the most classy player of of the four of them just because of that and i think he he he'll be the one that that will start this weekend i think jordi alba with what you said we have heard that he traveled directly to miami and not to sporting kansas city not confirmed still but wait, uh, wait, wait. Those, who those, said we? who's we who's we i haven't heard that you you heard that. that those are the rumors well yeah jose and i heard that so those are the rumors but we haven't been able to confirm that but it could be that jordi alba will not play against sporting kansas city he had something personal we we still don't know but it could be and also it could maybe be that Tata injured, Martino, maybe maybe he's, maybe like, he's you know injured we'll take, we'll or maybe Tata Martino, Tata Martino told him okay cool what you did was unacceptable go cool off exactly that could be possible so we will have to wait and see until uh until they talk to us until their media availability but I think we could see uh those variations I think Sergio Busquets will stay on the on the um, on the starting lineup for all the criticism that we have given Julian Gressel in recent weeks and I think it's deserved Francisco Garcia makes a good point in the comment section. Kudos to Gressel after every single match. He has, a pre, he has appeared before the press and top. No other veteran in Miami has talked after the defeats Gressel has. Now, he hasn't appeared after every game, I but, don't, he does, I but he does appear I, often. I'm not going to give Gressel anything because I think what he does is unacceptable. No, no, no. no, 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 no. Hold on. On the field. On the podcast and speak interiorities of your team. For me, that's unacceptable acceptable on every level and he could have made a bigger scandal with what he recorded and he uploaded without checking man get someone who speaks spanish to check your videos before you upload them he recorded luis suarez some calling someone he had a pee. 
in, in, in a video. That could be that could have been a bigger scandal. If he did that in MLS, he would have gotten suspended. So that's that's not something to joke about, and that's something that Julian Gressel has already been asked about a lot Listen, in media. Because Julian Gressel, podcast. for whatever you want to say about him on the field and even maybe off the field, he does he has shown face repeatedly. He is clearly an Inter Miami PR team favorite in terms of someone who will face the <laughs> he never music says no. and will be a professional this, even after a, a bitter defeat. Whereas other players will be like, nope, I'm not speaking. Julian Gressel, as Francisco Garcia says here, Gressel ha dado la cara. He has shown face. And Gressel does deserve credit for that. I know you, and Jose and you, or you and Jose, have definitely been critical about his sharings on his podcast. Like, you can have a podcast. I'm not saying that you, you cannot have a podcast, but for me, uh, there's a line that if you're a player that has a podcast, a lot of players have podcasts in the Premier League, in Leon Dureña, Liga Mek. A lot of players do that. They have Twitch. But for me, you have to have a line because that ends always. If you don't have a line, that ends always bad. We have seen it in the NBA, players going on transmissions and saying bad words and getting ejected from the league. We have seen... Uh, other I players. Think, okay, so, so, anyway, so your issue is that he's oversharing details from yes. the inside yes. of the locker room. From the inside of the locker room. For me, that's... Um, maybe. maybe. That's Look, not- I, all I'll say is it just goes back to the overall point for me that the locker room itself, this this roster it's, makeup... And, and listen, in MLS, in the talent world. might overcome the lack of team chemistry overall. Yeah. But that is not to say that this team chemistry is at its best, right? That they're all integrated with one another. That this definitely might be a fragmented locker room, right? There's some yeah. guys doing their own thing over here. Some guys are doing their own thing over there. And listen, That's that what that I happens. was saying. That happens. That I think any- Busquets is the only one that takes care of that. Well, that, listen, I think that, listen, that that's talks clear. to players. That's so it's clear because we're, we're about to run out of time. That happens in any team. There's always like yeah. you know different groups, different. right? Right. Like I, I sat with Peru's national team when they were a Copa America in 2016. I can't believe that that was eight years ago. But there's different people that sit at different tables, pe- different people that hang out with different people consistently. But all that said, you still yeah. try to be as cohesive a unit as possible. Like my impression, from what I gather, from being around the team and and just what we've seen and the different things that have gone on so far, I think that those lines, those divisions, are much much bigger. And this was yeah. something that the late Grant Wall, rest in peace, wrote about when he uh, covered David Beckham at the LA Galaxy in his book, The Beckham Experiment, which if you haven't read, it's a fantastic read. Go ahead and read it. It has a lot of great insight into the makeup of the team. And that can, I've said this multiple times, that can give you an idea of maybe what's going on here with Messi. When Beckham was around, initially it was you know Beckham and his group and the other players kind of off to the side, and they just didn't foster a good locker room environment. Right, like it, mm-hmm. it just—it wasn't a cohesive group. It wasn't as cohesive as it needs to be. Now, given Messi's talent, because Messi is much more of a player than David Beckham, maybe in MLS, Inter Miami will overcome that lack of overall unity. But I do think that we have seen bits and pieces of it, including the Julian Gressel podcast. But guys are just kind of doing their own thing. Everyone's just kind of out and about, just like you know. Sometimes you see Messi partying with Jordi Alba and Luis Suarez, and they're having a grand old time. Or sometimes they're going to dinner with Jorge Mas. To gecko in in brickle and etc cetera, etc. Cetera. So yeah, like but where the there, other there's, a to dip, to there's a big difference. The pro, that pro, the problem, and that's why I told you at the beginning of the year, you always need players in that locker room that bond everyone because you will always have your friends. You need a Victor Uyoa. I love this stuff. Victor Uyoa. Victor Uyoa, Gregore, Yellin. We need Yellin's yoga and all of that. The Yellin's calmness because listen, when Yellin Yelling was his performances on the field, whereas not not as top as when he was in Europe, but he was a, a, a glue to this. I talked to every one of these young players that that came up last year, and every one of them, Kremaski, David Ruiz, Ascona, Virginia, everyone told them, he called me if I had a house, where did I live, if I had food, if I had my family. And all of them told me that. Right now, Inter Miami doesn't have that. I, I don't think Messi has called Leo Alfonso to, to ask him, hey, how are you doing? Do you have where to live? Do you live with your parents? Do you have food? Do you eat every day? So Tank that, seven that's to one. All the Argentinian players eat together with the Barca bros and all the others eat outside in the kitty table. Yes, but, exactly. Yes. Um, 
Tony asks, they aren't a family. Are you expecting them to hang out all the time? No, they're not. No, I'm not, not a hang out, out all the time, but, but the, I don't the, think they have relationships. Correct. The clicks, each other. the clicks that happen in teams, that, that's mm -hmm. normal. But I normal. think the clicks here are way more divided and the yeah. mar and the cohesiveness is not even close to what you would ideally like a team to have. I agree 100%. I, and I, th I have I think, perceived that. And, and hopefully I, 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 that listen. gets better because that on the long run affects a team. Either you want it or but not, either you have Messi or not. Let, let's, I'll close out with this thought. Mm -hmm. I'll close out with this thought. This team, you know, win, loss, or draw. They talk about the game, talk about, and which, which I prefer, right? But you never really hear them talk about the unity. You don't hear them talk about how they're a family. You don't hear them talk about, like, th those words that, that existed when Phil Neville was coach, which yes. I gave him, you know, I gave him all the credit for that. He built a good bond. Now, did they perform on the field? Were they good enough in terms of tactics and all that? No. But if they had to highlight their strength is that they were a unified group. Whereas here, they're more talented, but are they as unified? Again, if they win, and they get to MLS Cup and they win it all, then it doesn't really matter. But if they don't, and this attributes to why they don't, then I think it's a bigger talking point. We'll see how the season goes. They will continue on on Saturday against Sporting Kansas City in what should be a sold-out stadium, a jam-packed stadium. Um, Patrick Mahomes with Messi. Taylor Swift and Travis Kelsey with Messi. <laughs> we'll, we'll see how it goes on Saturday for Inter-Miami. And we will be no back one will week. top that Yankee. No one will top that Yankee. For me, that was our highlight. You know that the video that we upload, the video that I took of that Yankee had 1.5 million views because everyone was excited to see that Just Yankee. Just wait till Fercho comes through and then it's going to get 2.5 million. Oh, Franco is new school. Jose and I are old school. Right? Tony, so Tony wish... asks, last, last comment from, from the comment section. Mm -hmm. Tony asks, says, this isn't a small club of the family atmosphere in Fort. That's fine. I, I don't disagree that that's the case now but you still need you always see. to be you to be unified yeah. as much as possible i'm not saying they With gotta be birthdays. best friends they gotta hang out mm -hmm. they don't have to be best not friends. every day but you see them like when their sons their kids have birthdays and all of that i i, I even remember leonardo campana when he was surprised that messi answered <laughs> on the whatsapp group he, he acted like so surprised, like Messi answered me. So Messi's not even hanging out with Campana, with Campana being the richest people. And, and think about that. And think about, and think about yeah. like, like the, the point that um, was made by, I think, Francisco Garcia made in the comment section. Julian Gressel faces the music on a regular basis, whereas some other players, they don't, in yeah. every now and then. Messi never speaks. Suarez, mm -hmm. once in a blue moon. Busquets and Alba, seldom. But everybody else has to Who make the rounds. More. You know, like mm -hmm. you know, everybody else has to make the rounds, and um, you know, obviously, no, not no two players are the same. But that doesn't necessarily foster a great environment. Right? Like, why am I always yeah. facing the music while this guy doesn't do anything? He's getting paid mm -hmm. multi million dollars, and I'm not. I mean, these are these are things that can go through a player's head. Yeah, read and that happened, experiment. and that had happened in the past with various locker rooms of good read, teams. Exactly. Read the Beckham experiment if you haven't, because it'll give you some insight into what could be happening here in Inter Miami with a player of Messi's magnitude and players that are not. And of you that can magnitude. even see it in, Mess in Beckham's documentary. If you have watched Beckham's documentary, his friends talked about that his team and in LA Galaxy were cooks and albañiles and all of that. Like construction workers and all of that. Even in the in the documentary, they are referring to them as that. And it is what it is. It's it's the difference in MLS and it's part. I wish that when Tata spoke about MLS, he spoke about everything, not just opening the salary cap and all of that, but everything because this league is not just about opening the salary cap. It, it, it it's about having parity and 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 having players motivated to play. But uh, unfortunately, that doesn't happen. And Inter Miami could pay on that because Messi is making millions of millions and millions of dollars. And you have Benjamin Kremaski and David Reese making $60,000 a year. So that's a big difference. All right. Anyway, we'll leave it there. Andreita, Ajisita, you came in hot on this. <laughs> uh, we are on time. One hour, no, 15 minutes. No, we passed the time. We're time. five minutes no, past. It's one hour and 15 minutes. We said no, it's an hour time. and ten. It's an hour and ten. Now we've passed it, but it's okay. It's fine. It was there's plenty to sink our teeth into. We'll leave it there for now. We will be back next week after the sporting, sporting Kansas City game. We'll get back to our one pod a week routine for a little bit now that there will be no mid 
week games for it. So we don't have anything interesting to talk <laughs> about in the middle of the week. <laughs> um, but anyway, all right. If you guys haven't, please leave a review, a like, a share, a subscribe, uh, Apple Podcast written review, Spotify written review. If you haven't already, if you're new, if you're old, whatever the case is, please do so. We're very close to hitting our target number. All right. So for Andrea Yanis. I am Franco Panizo. Thank you guys again for tuning in, for listening after the fact, for joining in in the comments section. Really appreciate hearing from all of you guys, your opinions, your thoughts, your insight. So Remember, it's Franco who manages everything. If your comment didn't get read, it's because of Franco. I can only do so much here. I only have two hands, okay? I only have two hands. All right. <laughs> But we'll leave it there. We'll be back next week. Thank you for listening to Miami Total Football Radio. Almost didn't get it out. All right. Talk to you guys again next week.